I knew that 1991 was going to be my last year racing Supercross, but I had no idea that San Diego would be the last time I raced Supercross on American soil. Right now we're looking at Jeff Stanton. Jeff was a two-time Supercross national champion at this point, was at the top of his game, very confident with his riding style, with his training, with the relationship with his mechanic, and very, very comfortable on the factory Honda. A young rider from France was, uh, had made a splash in the world championships, already a 125 and 250cc world champion, was Jean-Michel Bale. Jean-Michel was one of the few riders that would go through the whoops on the arches of his feet and drag his back brake, a technique that worked out very well for him, but was very hard on brake pads. Jean-Michel was known to kill a set of brake pads in one practice session. Here we see Jean-Michel, Jeff Ward, and in the back, Guy Cooper. Guy Cooper, one of the most flamboyant riders. It was a very difficult day for me because I knew it was going to be the last time that I would stand in front of the crowd at San Diego. But once again, I never knew that this would be my last Supercross. A very emotional day. I was honored from uh, the Mickey Thompson Entertainment Group, and I also had one of my heroes step up there and uh, give me a farewell, and that was Brock Glover. You can see my riding style. I'm just not comfortable. I have to sit in the back. Um, my right wrist is pretty much fused at this point. So it pretty much killed my riding style. I tried to work out, I tried to be strong, but I just never was the same after my wrist injury. Jeff Ward also sort of in the twilight of his career, was strong and was fast, but through all the injuries, wasn't quite there. That was number 100, Ron Lachine, also broken femur in 1990, was on the comeback trail, but never quite made it. The one that was supposed to be the next king was Damon Bradshaw. He had the style, he had the flair, and he had the speed. But for one reason or another, the mental game got to him. Mike Kodrowski, also a future multi-time national champ and also enduro champ. So Mike Kodrowski was one of those riders that went on to do many things. Here we're looking at the two wards, no relation, and definitely didn't look anything like each other. One tall and skinny, um, the other one short and thick, and that's Jeff Ward and Larry Ward. Here we see Mike Fisher on the factory KTM, and one of the riders who I always felt was the most flamboyant. <laughs> Jeff Stanton again, on top of his game and on top of the world. Guy Cooper uh, went on to win 125 national championships, uh, never won a Supercross championship, but always a crowd favorite. Guy Cooper always willing to give it up, give it everything he's got. And one of the riders I'm most proud of, of being involved with is the young rider number 125 here on a 125 peak pro circuit Honda, and that's Jeremy McGrath. Jeremy McGrath and I both still to this day are, are banging fenders, and that's in the, in the Torque Truck Series, and uh, probably one of the best competitors ever to be on a Supercross track. Jeremy, so smooth, so precise, it looked like he never made a mistake, but he was always going fast and always knocking down great lap times. Mike Fisher's factory KTM. Mike went on to be the Kawasaki team manager. So you can see a lot of guys evolved from this, this day and age. The beast from the East, Damon Bradshaw. Everything about him just said, you know, just said speed and aggression. Jeff Stanton, the silent, the silent killer. He was one of those guys that would just work um, harder than anybody I've ever met and just put the time in. But Jeff. What I'm most impressed with him was that he went from being a fast, fat, outdoor guy to a lean, mean, supercross machine. Larry Ward was always one of the faster riders whenever it came to racing in Europe at the end of the year, but for some reason never quite put it together. Uh, won a lot of races in, in America, but never put that championship together. Doug Dubach, a personal friend. We grew up racing together. Doug went on after this to win, uh, I think it's about a 1,000 uh, vet national championships. But Doug, one of those riders that was just so fast and I think actually peaked after uh, he quit racing Supercross.
That's myself, number 13, as you can see, once again, not very comfortable. As you'll notice, you don't see many shots of me out in practice because my hand would, would hurt so bad that I would only run a couple laps to get to know the track and save, save the strength for the race. So as you can see, not too fast, not too aggressive, just kind of learning the track and uh, hopefully had something to hang out later on that night. But this is one of those nights that was just kind of lackluster. Jeff Ward, one of the riders that's so smart, so smooth, and uh, still to this day, now he's again also racing trucks, but Jeff went on to race Indy cars, uh, Formula, Formula cars, and, and also super multi-time supermoto champion. But the guy you're watching there, number eight, John michel Bale, was the man of the hour. As you'll see shortly, one of the most difficult days in my racing career, having to say goodbye to the San Diego fans. And here we have Bebo from Scott Goggles with an honest to goodness happy birthday cake. There you go, happy birthday. He's still one of the winningest riders on the circuit. Once again, the Beast Police, David Bradshaw. Won't you welcome Jeff the Wolverine Stanton? Entertainment Group, Mr. Bill Marcel. Thank you, Joe. Ricky, on behalf of SRA, SRO Pace Promotions, Super Sports, and the Mickey Thompson Entertainment Group, the promoters of Supercross, I'd like to present you an award which says thanks for your contribution to the growth and success of Supercross. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh, It's definitely a rush to get something done like this for me here in San Diego, uh, my hometown where I grew up watching guys like uh, Brock Weber, Marty Smith, Marty Trench, you know, the guys that started motocross here in San Diego. And uh, to do well and, and to do what I did, it's, a, it's really been an honor. Um, I, I kind of have a speech plan, but I'm kind of lost for words right now. I guess I'd just like to thank some people. Instead of thanking my sponsors like everybody else does, I'd like to thank the people that have really made a difference in my life. Uh, for one, it's my family, my mom and dad, and uh, my sister Lori. And they've been there through the good times and the bad times. I'd like to thank my new wife Stephanie, who's uh, been putting up with me for the past three years, and they've been pretty tough ones. Um, people that have been around, like the boys from No Fear, and also uh, a new friend of mine that's been listening to me when things have been pretty much at their worst in my racing career, and that's James Williams. But uh, I'd just like to say, one of the greatest days of my racing career in my life was the day that I accepted Jesus Christ. So, I'd like to say, you know, everybody's cheering for me, and it's great. But I'd just like to say, if you meet me and forget me, you've lost nothing. But if you meet Jesus and forget him, you've lost everything. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. And 
also I'd like to get somebody else up here. Um, somebody that, that sort of went off to Europe, uh, one of my best friends and one of my buddies and teammates, and I'd like to get a round of applause for him because he's uh, officially tired from professional motocross. He's playing with it a little bit, but he uh, was San Diego's first son of Supercross, and that's Brock Glover. Give it up. Well, I found out about this about two hours ago, and uh, kind of the situation Rick's in right here in front of San Diego. We both grew up here. I've known Rick since he was nine years old, and um, he's been the inspiration in my career, and I hope I've been able to be the same to him. Both of us had fantastic careers, and we'd like to thank all the people in San Diego for being behind us all of the years. And um, I've won San Diego a few times, and I think Rick's won it. And I think everybody here would love to see him pull out a win tonight and make me as happy as can be, and probably bring tears to my eyes. But um, I've been working with Rick for the last couple weeks, too, and or actually the last couple months. And um, this last year of his career, I hope it's a great one. Um, injuries are probably forcing him to stop a little earlier than he'd like to. But, uh, like I said, I think he has nothing to be ashamed of. He's accomplished what no other person's ever done in the sport of motocross. And I hope everybody gives him a, you know, a great going out tonight. And I give a good round of applause because he's trying his best. And I'm sure he cares a lot about every one of you. Thanks. Thank you, Brock. Thank you, Ricky. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a hand for him. Enough of that uh, steamy eye stuff. Let's get to having some fun and uh, some good rough motocross racing like we're used to. Thanks a lot. What a lot of people didn't know was on press day on Thursday afternoon, I was out practicing the supercross track feeling pretty good. As you'll see here in a moment, there was a section with a triple into a whoop section going into home plate. What happened was I landed off the triple and my throttle stuck. I hit the whoops wide open on the back seat, came over this triple right here, landed wide open, hit those bumps, and flew all the way over all the whoops off the track and into the dugout. When I got up, I was knocked pretty silly, had a black eye, broke a helmet, um, and was, was pretty gun shy. So that's why I didn't practice that much the night of the Supercross. Um, little did I know that that was going to be the same, side that, the same sign that forced me to retire. After this race at San Diego, we went over to Japan to have a race um, right before Atlanta. Um, I went there, had a dismal performance. I think I finished sixth or seventh. Um, and then when, came, when I came home, I was practicing, landed off a jump, and all of a sudden, here I go again. My throttle stuck, and I'm running wide open through the field. I'm thinking, how can this happen? My practice bike and my race bike, both the throttle stick. Um, but what I found out as soon as I let go with my hand that I ended up, um, it was my wrist that was sticking. Um, at that point, I knew that it was something involuntary. It wasn't something that I could control, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't take somebody else out because I was just so greedy and wanted to keep racing. There was nothing that I wouldn't do at that time to keep riding. We were looking at putting a throttle on the left-hand side, fusing my wrist, um, doing anything that I could. But uh, nothing was going to work. And um, through that, I beat up my body quite a bit, took a lot of anti-inflammatories that later on in life I uh, suffered some, some situations with uh, ulcers and things like that. But I didn't know that. I just knew that if I took this pill, my hand felt better and I could race hard. But um, as a racer, you're going to do everything that you can to get back on the bike. But this was my last American Supercross. It was, uh, it's hard for me to watch now and go through those emotions and those, uh, those empty feelings of wanting to beat everybody and still having the right mindset and still basically having a healthy body but just having one broken limb, and that was my right wrist, to stop me from achieving my goals. I have a beautiful wife. I have be three beautiful children. And uh, since then, my career has, has changed in so many ways. I went from coaching riders to racing trucks to racing stock cars to moving to North Carolina to so many different things. And also, one of my one thing that I'm very proud of is being part of Jimmy Johnson, who I feel is the greatest stock car driver of all time. Um, 
so my life was changed forever that one day in Gainesville, and this was the end of it when it came to my last race in San Diego. Um, a tough pill to swallow. When you've experienced being the best and you've sat on top and you've won multiple championships, or even one championship for that matter, you never want it to end. It was once you taste the high life, you want to keep that, keep that train going forever. Um, I did feel that my career was ended short, but I had a lot of great times and I had a lot of great races and I got to race against a lot of great adversaries. Um, would I do it all over again? you damn right I would. But uh, everything, all good things have to come to an end and little did I know that this was going to be my last American Supercross.